We want insight. Whether it's into how to stop global warming or just the quickest way to get to work. Now, to get insight, we need to use data. For example, if we're thinking about global warming, how much CO2 is emitted? What renewables could we use? And how much do they cost? But there's a problem. Rather than it being easy and quick to get the data we need to start doing our analysis and creating our insight, it can take weeks or even months to get that data together rather than being a matter of minutes or hours. To understand that problem a little deeper, I want you to think about an analogy. I want you to imagine that insight is like a cake. So just like we combine together ingredients, it's flour, sugar, eggs, maybe some butter, to make a delicious cake, we want to make an insight cake. But rather than bringing together flour and sugar and butter, we want to bring together data sets, maps and statistics and other pieces of data. Imagine though that to make a cake, you'd first have to collect the ingredients. You'd have to actually go to the farm and collect the corn and mill it and then cart it back to your house. And only then could you start baking. Rather than a quick trip to the store and a couple of hours in the kitchen, to make a cake would take weeks or even months of effort. And this is where we are with data today. With data, we spend most of our time collecting and preparing the data and are left with only a small fraction of the time to actually turn it into insight. So there's this huge amount of friction in getting and using data. And that stops us getting insight and solving important problems, whether it's climate change or the quickest way to do your commute. So what can we do about it? Now, there are lots of sources of friction and lots of things we could improve. There's legal barriers to getting data or it's very expensive. You can't even get the data from a government or a corporation or you have to pay large amounts of money. Or maybe it's data quality. There's that data there, but it's all on stacks of printed paper that you'd have to hand type in to be able to use it. However, we want to just focus on one. What we're going to call kind of data logistics. We want to eliminate the friction getting data from A to B, from tool A to tool B, or from that database online into your tool on your desktop so you can start your analysis. That is our fundamental goal, frictionless data. We want to do for data what containerization did for the shipping of goods, dramatically cutting costs, allowing for massive automation and economies of scale, and making things fast, efficient, and cheap. So I want you to take you back to what shipping was like in 1955. It was manual, it was slow, and it was costly. Or individual Steve Dawes used to carry sacks of flour or bunches of bananas onto a ship, store it on the hold, and then when it arrived somewhere, they had to reverse the process. But today, shipping is containerized. Instead of having individual people have to carry a sack of flour, big machines can load the steel containers on and off ships. It's automated, it's fast, and it's cheap. And it's safe, by the way, compared to the old machine way. And just to give you a sense of how big a difference this made to shipping and transporting goods, it used to be that 80% of shipping something from, let's say, America to London wasn't the cost of the vessel across the ocean, it was the cost of loading it at either end. And containerization reduced that cost 7,000 times, or conversely, made us 7,000 times more productive. Now, can we do the same thing for data? Yes, we can. We can do containerization for data, and we call it data packages. Data packages are containers for data. It's that simple. Just like we put bananas inside a steel container and that allows us to load them on ships massively more efficiently. So we want to take data like a spreadsheet and put it inside a virtual container, a data package that will allow us to massively more efficiently load that data in and out of the tools we have. The container is important, not because it's just a container, but because of the tooling it allows. So with the ships, it isn't the fact we've just got the steel box, it's that by having the steel box, we can have 
massive cranes that can zoom around and load those containers on the ship really quickly. Or that we've got trucks that are built for those steel containers now, or even railway cars. And it's the same thing for data. Once we have our standardized virtual box, our data package, we've got all kinds of tools that we can use for that. We can validate the data automatically. We can store and search that data in standard ways. We can import that data to your specific tool or export it from it automatically. You might not know that those containers you might have seen on trucks or in container ports actually come in different shapes and sizes. Some longer, some shorter, some wider. And that's the same for our data packages. You could have different kinds of data packages customized to your needs. And just to take one example, we have tabular data packages, which, guess what, offer tabular data like spreadsheets, specially designed for that kind of data and for tools that want to use tabular data. Let's just recap and summarize. First, just to go all the way back to the beginning, we want to turn data into insight, and we want to do that quickly, easily, and reliably. But today, there's huge amounts of friction, and you can spend weeks preparing data to be able to do just a few hours of analysis. However, by containerizing data, putting it into data packages, we can dramatically cut the costs of acquiring and integrating data and create a world of frictionless information more insight, more efficiently.